a national park in Japan. One of the cool places about this is it actually serves as a checkpoint from back in the day where people had to come through and get checked for weapons and illegal items as they were traveling Japan. Mm -hmm. So this is just one of the cool things that we've been able to do while we're here. It's like the stuff you see in those samurai movies and stuff. Hand so. over your swords. So, But no, we're glad that you could be here. This is going to be an amazing time. We get to see the sights of Japan. We're going to see the manufacturing of Mitutoyo. Never before seen tours of these factories in Mitutoyo. You're not going to want to miss it. Here we are in one of the newer manufacturing facilities, the CMM assembly. We have a couple different machines being assembled down there. We have the MyStar, we have the Krista AV, which you might recognize from our shop, uh, models five, seven, and 900. I think one of the really cool things about this process is that it's basically a moving assembly line. So the CMM will come in at one station and it moves from station to station until you get a complete CMM on the other line. Look at this thing, it's gigantic. Not only can you have monster CNC's, but you can also have monster CMM's. This look familiar, Travis? Uh, yes, it does look familiar. It's like, it's the birthplace of the CMM, right? I mean, you can't have an accurate CMM if you don't have an accurate granite table. So when they come in here and they machine this, they gotta put these holes in, they got to polish it flat. It's a pretty impressive process. This is how they come in, right? This comes straight from the quarry. It's rough cut. Now, one thing I wanna point out is you can see this Y-axis guide right here. It comes in cut into the granite. Now that might not seem like much, but there are other people out there, other manufacturers, we're not gonna name them, but they will actually bolt that guideway on. And over time, everywhere you have a bolt or a fastener, that begins to warp, and that's gonna distort the measurements on your CMM, and that's no good. So here, you have it in the granite. This is never gonna move. Right now, they're pretty rough if you feel them. But then after they're done being surface ground, they're completely pristine and smooth. After they're done grinding, they have a machine that pops in these holes where these screws go into. So when we walked in here, they got us to put these funny looking shoes on, but at least we're not the only ones here that have to wear them. That's actually to keep any static off of us. If you've ever built a computer, you might be familiar with this. But over here, they have circuit boards out in the open. So this is to protect those from any harm. And this is really a continuation in the manufacturing process. Before you had seen the granite slabs, right? Now those granite slabs come over here and you really begin to see the CMM take form. And you'll also notice that these are the big CMMs, really, right? 1200 series and up. Big boys. Yeah, big boys. Or girls, I don't know what Three meters long, that's huge. Don't let my dad see this, he's gonna want one of these in his shop. We also have a Krista Apex V, but this one is obviously much longer, 10 feet, I believe. Don't even think about it, dad. If you've ever purchased a CMM, you probably recognize one of these. This is a Checkmaster, and a Checkmaster is essentially a series of calibrated gauge blocks put together, also manufactured by Mitutoyo, and they use these to verify the accuracy in your Y-axis, your X-axis, they even do volumetric where they put it on this stand right here so it lifts it up so it can check that Z accuracy. These are just one of the tools that Mitutoyo not only manufactures but also uses to make sure that their CMMs run smooth, accurate, every single time. Every once in a while, when you look on the floor in Mitutoyo's factories, you'll see employees with a special badge and a special mark on their hat. These employees are called Meisters, and it's one of the highest ranks you can have as an employee in Mitutoyo. These are the best of the best when it comes to assembly, inspection, and working with hands. And they also have apprentices that train directly under them. Very few people out of the hundreds and hundreds of people that work for Mitsutoyo have this honor of being called a Meister. So here we have where the MyStars are assembled, and you can see that they have these carts here with all the components for the assembly. The carts are always put at the same spot, 
and each drawer is properly labeled with each component on every shelf. Mitutoyo assembles so many of these machines that they have everything in line the exact same time for each machine. This is almost exactly like what my dad talks about in the shop and what he tells everyone. Keeping all your parts organized, lined up, put them all in the exact same spot. And with a company like this, dealing with these machines on such a wide scale, accuracy, precision, and organization is everything. This is the symbol of Mitutoyo, and it has a really cool story behind it. The founder of Mitutoyo had strong Buddhist beliefs, and as you can see, it's got three gourds, and it represents benevolence, wisdom, and valor. It's really neat because this symbol was actually on the old CMM factory from Mitutoyo. They actually tore it down to renovate it to make a new CMM factory. So they actually took that same symbol that was on the front of the factory and they brought it here to display. So as we walk through here, I think what you'll see is we're basically in a mini city, right? This is a massive manufacturing area. It's over 100,000 square meters, which comes in at just over a million square feet. Massive. We are in the Caliper production facility, began in 1950 and hence since has sold over 70 million calipers. You can see these, the digital calipers we're really familiar with at our shop. We have the coolant proof calipers and the Digimatic calipers. You see these at shops everywhere. And they have some pretty cool uh, dial calipers in different colors, that's pretty neat. Let's go see where it's made, let's do it. So here we go, it's loud in here, but man, we have manufacturing happening all over. Caliper after caliper is being cut, thousands a day. Oh, now this is pretty cool. So we have steel being cut right now. Here, come check this out. That's pretty fast. Like I say, thousands of calipers a day that they're cutting here. Just day and night these machines are running, bringing the entire world top-notch calipers. Here you can see where they actually cut out the frame. Here is the birth of a caliper right here. All right, so this is pretty amazing. You can see right here we have a rack of pure laser cut steel. Now along this entire line, we have an automated machining process. We do milling, drilling, heat treatment. Station after station after station. It goes all the way down and it comes back around. We start with this, we load them up in this machine and out comes this right here. Absolutely amazing. And again, automated, right? If you'll notice, you notice, see how many operators are down here? Zero operators. So one of the manufacturing processes that can create uh, the biggest inconsistency is deburring, but not here. As you can see, they're taking this caliper and they're moving it around the exact same way every single time, creating a nice, consistent deburr process that gives you that continuous smooth feel on those calipers. So we have another line here with the bodies of the calipers. See, we have the raw body that it starts off with. It takes the body, it machines the front, puts the guide in, puts the screw holes in, you get the finished product at the end, and it moves on to the next step. They have 12 machines that are making these bodies for the calipers. you want an idea of the scale of production, just look around here, nothing but calipers. So one of the cool things you can see right here is they're applying the scale. And as you see right here, that label that you see on all your calipers is the scale. And this scale is what allows these calipers to be as accurate as they are. And if you come right over here, we'll see that adhesion process where they're putting it on. One thing I noticed is it smells like manufacturing in here. And you know, that's money, but it's also, it's hard work, right? People are here every day producing the quality instruments that help the world go round. Pretty cool stuff. Now we're entering into the next phase of production, and you can see it's pretty busy in here, right Tyson? This is crazy. A lot of automation, a lot of process going on, and again, it's the next step, right? So before we had the scale that was put on here, and here you have the rest of the component process. It looks like the, uh, the thumb rail, the LCD, or the, the electronic components, a lot of stuff being installed, a lot of automation. Very impressive, Tyson. You can see it's a very systematic process, so you know, 
each step of the way they're they're assembling another piece and another piece and eventually you have a full caliper. All right, so one of the things that you might know from a Mitsutoyo pair of calipers is how smooth the feel is. Well, right here, it's kind of hard to see, but that's what they're inspecting, right? They're looking for that, that smooth feel that makes a Mitsutoyo caliper such high quality. This machine takes measurements on the ID of the caliper. It spits out a certification whether it passes or fails. You can see it's using a Mitsutoyo machine to check its own calipers. That's crazy. They completely make the calipers from scratch and they check it on their own machine. That rail is about as fast as that train that we were just on, huh? The billet train. How do you know that your calipers are actually going to keep the dust and coolant out on those coolant proof that you use every day? Well, right here, they have an automated process that checks it and determines it. They use a vacuum to make sure that you're going to get no dirt and no coolant inside those calipers. Pretty cool. This is the area where they pack up the calipers in the boxes. You can see the machine brings down the case and then it actually stamps the barcode on top of the caliper box and then it gets wrapped up and shipped to the customer. Over here, the QR code on the caliper gets scanned. It prints out a certificate saying how accurate the caliper is that gets shipped out with every caliper to the customer. All right, so I think one of the main themes that you see in this factory right here is automation, automation, automation. But we also have a lot of Mitsutoyo employees checking the process. We automate things, we make it smooth and efficient, but we also have a lot of good old manpower or woman power to verify that everything comes out flawless. All right, so everybody knows that if you want to manufacture well, you got to inspect well. But I think people forget that even inspection tools themselves need to be manufactured, yes, right? Someone's got to make the inspection tools. Someone has to make the tools to inspect the inspection tools. Exactly, which I think was probably the coolest part about today is we got to take you on an in-depth look on how those inspection tools are actually manufactured right here, really from the ground up, from the raw material, through the process, the inspection, the calibration, all of it. So thank you for joining us. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.